welcome to Eye Opener, powered by Siemens. And now, please welcome your host, Gugan Sanger. Yeah, I guess it's just, it's, it is work in progress. So it's always going to be kind of, it's yeah, I mean, with going. It's, this is the difference between like hardware and software. Like if you're making hardware, you have to, you have to stop at some point because you, you need to go and make it or you've got to make the molds or you've got to go and cut some metal or print a circuit board. So you have to, you know, draw a line. Software will just go on forever. Yeah. Um, so you can't be too perfectionist about it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to reach a point where we, we will, there's a phrase that you call ship then iterate. So it's like, we need to get this to people in a state that they can use it and it's not going to break. Yeah. And then we will keep improving it. Yeah, yeah. And that's how we do. So we will never say, oh, this is perfect. This is excellent. We'll say, this is good enough. And, but we'll, For now. And then we'll listen to real world feedback. And there's always stuff that comes through we didn't consider. And we're like, oh, okay, good. And we'll change that. Yeah. You know, and in the past, we've made features that people don't really use for various reasons. And then you'll make stuff that they use all the time. And they're like, great. And that's what you aspire to. Yeah. But you also have to take risks sometimes. Sometimes you don't have all that information. I think, I think this is going to work. And you try it and it does or it doesn't. But you always, you actually learn more when it doesn't. Because you're like, why did that not work? So you always need that feedback loop. So in design, you always need that feedback loop. You can't operate in a vacuum. Yeah. <clears throat> so no one person should be working on a single feature that goes out because you'll miss stuff. You always need input. So it's all part of a team. And the, and the users are part of that team, really. Yeah. They're very valuable. No, of course. And I think, um, I mean, in general, I think software can be quite overwhelming. So then if I look at predictor maintenance, predictor maintenance can be quite complicated it can mm. be very overwhelming so i guess you know when it comes to um making the features on the sensei product how do you know you're making the right features oh that's a great question <laughs> it's like the biggest question in software really i mean in in terms of predictive maintenance there's a big cultural issue as in you're expecting some users to shift from the way they've done it for like 20 years to a whole new way of doing it so how do you manage that process? So you need to appreciate they're going to be reluctant. Some of them might be. Some of them don't want to sit down in front of a computer. So you've got to make it really compelling. So up front, you need to give them some very quick wins. Like, like you've got 6,000 machines <laughs> you're responsible, but here's only, the only 10 you need to look at today. That's like a key part of the product. So that hopefully gets them on board in that initial period. And then they can explore it themselves and, you know, learn a bit more. But the way we look at features is, you know, we've got ideas of stuff we'd like to work on, but we work very closely with our um, that customer services team. Yeah. So we have a team called CSM who work directly. So they're, they're our bridge to the customers and they always feed back everything. And being on the product team, we're like in the middle of everything. So you get your, your business requirements come in. It's like, we need to do this this year. We need to do these markets. We need to be in these territories and in these um, particular industries. And then we have the users come in. And then we have what we want to do. And we look at all of it and we filter it through and decide what our priorities are. And then, and then work on it. And it's not a question of like who shouts the loudest. Because you could have like one or two even individual users who could dominate just because they're, I want this, I want this, I mm. want this. And you could make stuff for them, but it might not be the best thing to do. So yeah. we collect it all and then we make strategic decisions over what to build. And because we're a small team, we can change path if we're on the wrong path. You know, we can spend, we have quite short development cycles. You know, we might spend six weeks on something and we can switch to the next thing. Yeah. If it's not working. So collect it all, decide um, and have that feedback loop to know when things were working or not working. And you're just by having all that information, you can navigate the path. You know, you get, you'll get a combination of people asking for stuff and then we make it and then people use it as well. The worst thing is to make it and no one uses it. There's nothing worse than that. And the worst feedback is no feedback. No feedback. Yeah, of course. I'd rather people moaned about it all because then you know what's wrong. Yeah, yeah. The worst is when you've worked on something for ages and you put it out and you're like, let's do a, we'll do a press release. Yeah. I'll write some stuff and you put it out and they're just like, you know, tumbleweeds and you're like, yeah, awful. If, I'd rather put it out and people said this is rubbish. Yeah. 
because you're like, okay, I've, I can learn something. You've got, so then you've got something to work. Okay, we made mistakes. That's, we made, yeah, exactly. Let's not do that again. What are we going to do next time? But no feedback is like, oh, I don't know what to do now. It doesn't, you know, I don't <laughs> you're know kind of twiddling failed. your thumbs like, yeah. oh, what do I do? But the same yeah. if it's successful. It's like people just say, yeah, it's good. Yeah. But you need to know what's the next bit? What's the next bit? Yeah. I think that's what it is. You're just no, you're never going to be satisfied with the product because there's always something that will come up. Hmm. Um, so I guess, you know, touching on kind of making the right features, it'll be interesting just if you could kind of just dig into or dive into even um, what that process is. So, you know, how does that process work? Is it on an ad hoc basis? Do you have, um, you know, a process of collecting all the feedback and then reviewing it as a team? And I guess maybe that, Uh, links into you know if you're doing like a feature launch Mm. you know how how does that process work and what what do you currently have yeah we do all of those things so internally um we have you know we use slack which is a team communications thing and in there we have a specific channel to collect ideas so it's just one it's really easy just to have one place for stuff it's like we don't want email plus this plus this plus this because things get lost so one channel anyone can post anything in there it might be their own ideas. It might be feedback from customers. But everything goes in there. And then I will track it and collect it all. And then we can review it and pick out the bits that are the bits that need doing and are compelling. And often it's things we've never even thought about, so which is really good. And at the moment, we've got like 500 things in there. Yeah. So you need to stay on top of that. And that's a really nice way of um, just getting any kind of ideas come in. And... You know, there's ways you can brainstorm and things or generate ideas and all that's a bit cliche. But the the key thing is there are no bad ideas. You know, anyone in the company can put stuff in there and it will get collected. Yeah. And that's quite powerful. It's really, I find it really useful, especially when people have start, just started at the company because they've got a fresh eye. You know, we, yeah. st- we stare at it all day, every day. Sometimes you're just like, you get a bit blind to certain things and they'll just go, why is that there? Yeah, and yeah. you'll be like, "That is a good point." And like, "Why is that button so small?" And you're like, "You know, that is also a good point." And from a designer perspective, that you, you have to take, there's no ego. <laughs> you have yeah, to, you have to take your ego because we get this all day, every day. So you're just like, "No, they're right. Let's, yeah. just, let's just fix it." So that's one part of it. And like I said, Umar, we get the direct customer feedback. We get feedback within the product itself, where people can can write stuff in there. And like I said, we get the business um coming in as well with things we need to do things we need to break out into which is more of the longer term stuff like here's our theme for the year yeah and then we have the short term things we want to fix as well do you find um sometimes i guess you know sensei covers a lot of different industries mm. you know so automotive oil and gas just to name a few do you find sometimes the feedback that you get is different depending on what industry that company or business is operating in yeah it's it's funny because i think that's quite unique about us is that we are machine agnostic yeah and kind of industry agnostic um so it's both a positive thing but it's also hard to kind of wrap your ha- head around sometimes but then you find there's a bit of an overlap like they might just run a lot of pumps or a lot of motors depending on on the industries so it is quite general the feedback we get you know, and it it's helpful if you if we can scale up to like have thousands of the same type of machine, then it all gets a bit more powerful. So I think the biggest breakthroughs we have are in those different types of industries, and it doesn't really matter what the industries are. It comes down to really how good the data is. Yeah, we get from the machines. That's the fundamental part to all of this. You know, good sensors already connected, collecting high quality data. So we don't have to do much pre-processing to bring it into the application. Once that's all sorted, you know, you're you're off and running um, and we can extract, you know, meaningful things from it. So that's really the core of it. Um, and like I said, we've got experience in lots of different industries and it's it's really interesting. You know, it's things I never expected we'd be doing yeah. in all kinds of all over the world as well. In the whole process of you kind of um, implementing some of these changes to features within Sensei product, what's been your favourite feature change that you've made or implementation? Well, I like a bit of like 
handcrafted stuff from a design perspective, which I think is something that differentiates us. When I was saying about enterprise software, it's all very kind of corporate and generic. Yeah. But it's nice to have a bit of, I don't know, a bit of a personal touch. So one thing I like doing is like drawing icons that are specific to the product. You can just buy stuff off the shelf, but that doesn't differentiate you from anything else. And then you can add little touches to that that bridge the gap between, like we said, UX and UI. So yeah. you can use graphic elements to make things easier to use. So like when close to when I started and I was like, how do I make a little impact? You know, I, I want to show people I can do stuff. And it was just like changing the angle of an icon that was rubbing up next to another icon. And we, cause we have like hundreds of these that overlap. And if you could just reduce a little bit of clutter, stuff gets easier to use. And then if you take that approach across the whole thing, the whole thing becomes easier to use. So it's tiny little changes can make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, and focusing on details, detail, 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 and then you've got the sum of all of those changes really kind of adds up after a while. Um, and that's the combination, the visual and the ease of use. Yeah. Um, so it all kind of loops back around, really. I guess that's it. I think it's that gradual kind of step mm. step up so making all those kind of little little changes yeah. makes such a big difference and I think sometimes like people make the mistake of trying to do it all at once mm. and that can just be overwhelming itself because you're kind of like oh this is wrong this is wrong this needs to be fixed yeah and trying to do it in a bubble as well sometimes yeah. I've convinced myself it's great and then <laughs> you find out it's not. It just, yeah exactly then, okay, okay. I, I'll, I'll yeah. take I'll take that on the chin yeah. We'll fix it. Okay, so a big thank you to our audience for tuning in on today's um, product podcast series. Uh, please like and subscribe to our channel um, and stay tuned for our next one in the series. So Adam, if you've got a question for our next guest, what would it be? Oh, that's a good one. It would be, um, what was the last product you bought? So like hardware product? That's a good question. And the second bit to that would be, why did you choose that one? Great. So thank you again, Adam, for joining me on the show and a big thank you to. To find out more, search Sensei Predictive Maintenance.